verse number 21. Those who have it will say, got it. Now then, those who do not have it will say, not yet. Now then, those of you who do not have it and did not bring your Bible this morning, we have provided the script on the screen. We will read this together collectively, and then we'll take a text for the morning, and we will hear a word from the law. Now then, we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 21. Let's read. Read. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. All right, that's good. Now, I want you to turn again to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, and we're going to take a look at verse 21 in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, and number 2, 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 21, we're going to read that one too. Those who have it say, got it. got it. Now let's read it together. What does it say? Now he which establishes us with you in Christ Jesus and hath anointed us is God. Now then, now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. We, are we are anointed. Well, we're going to see. Why don't you have your seat? We're going to see. We're going to see. Now, the first thing I'm going to do by way of introduction is say to you that A, there is quite a bit of confusion in the field of Christodom and in the field of religion about anointing. We have women and men all over television and radio saying I'm, uh, I was anointed. Or not only that, but they say that uh, this man has been anointed. Benny Hinn has a book out on anointing. And Benny Hinn is totally confused on the Bible and anointing. Now, today we want to find out exactly what does the Bible teach with regard to Christian anointing. Because there, 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 there is quite a bit of confusion about this word. And not only that, but because of the confusion uh, about anointing, there are folk who believe even now that some people have a special anointing and it makes them a little different than anybody else because they have a thing called special anointing well I've come today to tell you that the Bible does not substantiate that not teach that but we're going to show by the word of God exactly what that is now uh, B what we're going to do now is define the word uh, the word uh, anointing uh, simply means to consecrate or set apart for a work and service to God. Now that's what the word means. It means to consecrate to set apart for a work uh, in service to God. Now, um, the second part of that is talking and explaining how it's done. The way it was done was oil 
was either poured on one or the oil was rubbed or smeared on one. Now that's anointing. So then, a person that has been anointed, it means that the person has had oil poured on them or the person has had oil rubbed on them or smeared on them or applied to their bodies. The implication of the definition denotes that a person who has been anointed by God meant that that person had been called by God and God had a calling on that person's life. Now that's, that's the word. That's the etymology of the word. Now, see, uh, we're going to talk about the history of the word. The word goes etymologically, the word and historically, the word goes all the way back to the eastern land where shepherds first started the practice of anointing. Shepherds who watch their sheep noticed that lice and insects would get into the ears of their sheep, causing infection to the end that the sheep would die. So what the shepherds began to do was put together an oil and they would take that oil and either pour it on the sheep's head in the area of the sheep ears which hindered the insects from getting into the ears of the sheep because of the slippery nature of the ointment the insect and lice as they made their way to the ears of the sheep would just simply slip off so what that did and the implication of that indicated that the sheep had been anointed with oil. Now, anointed with oil or anointing the sheep goes back to the definition. When one has been anointed by God, that means that that person is under the blessings, the power, the providence and has been empowered by God Almighty. That person is therefore protected by God. So even when we pour oil, or when the shepherds poured oil on the head of the sheep, it showed in even in that anointing, the sheep were being protected from lice and insects. In other words, uh, when a person is and was anointed by God, it meant that that person was under the protection of God, that person was empowered by God, 
that person was receiving or in position to receive the blessings of God. And not only that, but God had a special calling on that person's life. So here's what I want you to remember. I want you to remember that anointing is a pouring out of and on to a person, place, or thing in order to set it apart for the service of God. I hope you didn't miss that. Here is what I need you to see. That anointing is simply the pouring on or the pouring out upon a person, place, or thing which sets them apart whether it's the person whether it's a place or whether it's a thing if it has if, if, if there has been a pouring on or an outpouring of from God whenever the outpouring reaches that thing becomes uh, a thing ordained by God whatever it is it could be a person place or thing but if it had been anointed by God it makes it a, a special person place or thing and it is a pouring on a pouring out of the blessings of God and shows that God has a calling on that person's life. Here's what you want to remember. Here's what you want to remember. You want to outline, you want to underline uh, in the corridors of your mind. You want to underline that for a thing to be anointed, for a person to be anointed, for an object to be anointed, there has to be a pouring. A pouring out or a pouring on. I want you to watch that adjective, pouring. Because it's going to become increasingly important. As I uh, uh, teach you this morning about anointing. Now, uh, D, so far as our introduction is concerned. Um, anointing in the Old Testament was practice. Anointing in the Old Testament was a practice. And it was recognized by God. In the 16th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel, we find that God sent Samuel to anoint David as king. And not only that, but in the 40th chapter of the book of Leviticus, we find that the priest Aaron was anointed to do service in the tabernacle of God. We also find that the tabernacle itself was anointed by God. Elisha the prophet was anointed by God. So here's what we have. We have a king being anointed in order to rule. We have a priest being anointed in order to carry out the worship of the tabernacle. We have a prophet being anointed to carry out prophet properly and accurately the word of God. We have the tabernacle being anointed which means it was set apart for the worship of God. So then, anointing was practiced in the Old Testament. It is a biblical practice. It was a physical practice. I say it was a physical practice. The anointing didn't make the person necessarily better. It was just an indication that they had been selected by God. 
There was no power in the oil. Uh, Y'all need to get this. Because I'm going to be through with this in a minute. There was no power in the oil. The power was in God. The anointing was simply to what was simply an acknowledgement by God that you my man. Now you may mess up, but you my man. So it was just an announcement that, that David is my choice for king. It was just an announcement that Aaron is my choice for uh, the priest. It was an announcement that Elijah is my choice for the prophet. It was an announcement that the tabernacle is where I will dwell and is a place where people will come to worship me. My glory will hover in the tabernacle of God. Now then, so it is abundantly clear that anointing was practiced in the Old Testament. Now, what you have, what I've just given you, I've given you an overview of and a historical setting of, of anointing uh, in the Old Testament. Now, we're going to go to the New Testament because this is where we get our answer. What is the question? The question is simple as, are we as believers today anointed by God? Here is the second question. Is there some special group over here separate from the collective group of believers in this day and time whom God gives special anointing to that he does not give the whole congregation? That's the question. The reason that is the question is because that's what you see on TV. You, you, say, uh, you see on TV, they, they try to make you believe that that woman who's speaking has been anointed. That man that's speaking has been anointed. And it, which means is that they got something special. It's the same thing as God spoke to me last night and God told me to tell you in other words, I have something special. I have some special contact with God that you don't have. And you don't have it because God didn't give it to you. He gave it to me. So if you want to know what to do about what to do about, you got to come to me. Because I've been anointed. In other words, God spoke to me and told me some stuff that he didn't tell you. In other words, God gave me some word and some truth that's not in the book. That's the point they tried to make. So when they therefore ask you for money, you said, oh, I better give him some money. Because that dude, that been, you know, he's he been anointed by God. And so they, but that's a trick. Hoodwinking you. Bamboozling you. Bamboozling you. Now the question, the question here, uh, or the question on the floor is, am I a child of God? Anointed by God. And if I am a child of God, anointed by God, how was I anointed? When was I anointed? And were all of us anointed the same way? Those are the questions that we got to answer, and we're gonna answer them very quickly. And we're gonna, and we're not going much further than first. I finally got to First Corinthians one twenty-one. All right. Now, the Bible says, "Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God." So, the question is answered. Are we anointed? According to that verse, we, we're anointed. So the question has been answered. Before I unpack that verse, because I'm, gonna, I'm going to unpack that verse, 
before I unpack that verse, let me just uh, tell you that Jesus, as an example of anointing, that Jesus Christ was anointed. Let me just say to you that the word Christ, Christos, means the anointed one. Jesus, Messiah, and Christ, the anointed one. So Christ is the anointed one. Well, when was Christ anointed? He was anointed when John saw him coming and said behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world and then Matthew chapter 3 the Bible talks about the fact that John saw him coming and you know the Bible when John says I need be be baptized of you and you come to me Jesus said suffer it to be so now John for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness and the Bible said he suffered him and the Bible says after Jesus was baptized, he came straightway up out of the water, and here comes the anointing. And lo, the heaven was open. And the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting upon him. And a voice out of heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. So Jesus was anointed. Not only was he anointed, but he acknowledged the fact that he was anointed. Put me Luke chapter 4. I don't want to get too deep in this. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 uh, on the board. Uh, and verse uh, number 18. Jesus acknowledges that he was the anointed one. Uh, in Luke chapter 4 and verse number 18 watch the Bible the Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had he was anointed who anointed how he was anointed by the father himself so Jesus Christ is the anointed one alright then uh, don't forget this now get me first john chapter number four first john chapter number four and and remember that jesus is the anointed one first john chapter four, get me the 17th verse uh jesus says the spirit of the lord is upon me for he hath anointed me he was anointed by the spirit of god now don't don't, don't miss this point Jesus was anointed by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus. The Holy Spirit, how did he anoint him? He anointed him by announcing, by lighting. You see, when God anoints, God anoints, he anoints objects, he anoints persons, he anoints places. When the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit licked on his shoulder, that was an indication of the anointing of Jesus Christ. Well, now in 1 John chapter number 4 and verse 17, the Bible says, Herein is our love made perfect, that, watch this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we which mean Christ is the anointed one and we are the anointed ones because as he is so are we he was anointed when was he anointed he was anointed at the baptism of John not only was he anointed but he had certified that he was anointed not only did he certify that he was anointed, but then John says, as he is, so are we. Which means now that we are the anointed ones. Well, now let's go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 21. Well, I, I guess I better, I, I guess I better, uh, I, I guess I better uh, uh, 
uh, show you uh, Acts chapter 10 uh, and verse uh, uh, maybe 37. Uh, I better show you that. I, I don't want to run over it. I'm assuming that you understood this. But, but Acts chapter 10 uh, and verse number 37, the Bible says, uh, that word I say ye know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism was John preached. And then the next verse says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Which means when the Holy Ghost lit on Jesus that was the anointing on Jesus from heaven itself. And then John says, as he is, so are we. So if Jesus is the anointed one and we are his, we are also anointed. But the question is, are we all anointed alike? That's the question. Or do we have some special group of anointed people? Well, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 21. Paul writes to the church at, Galatia, at, at Corinth. And here's what Paul says uh, to the church. He says, for after that, Paul is writing to the whole church. He is writing to the church at Corinth. He's not writing to one person. He is writing to the entire church at Corinth. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. For it pleased it. Second Corinthians, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians chapter number one. Second, I made the same mistake earlier. Second Corinthians chapter number one and verse number 21. Now, he which establishes us with you in Christ and have anointed us is God. Now watch this. Now, Paul writing to the whole church, not to a special group. He's writing to the whole church. And he says, now, what do you mean now? Why would we just say now? All right. Well, in the 18th chapter of the book of Acts and verse number 8, the Bible says, the Corinthians, the latter part of that 8th verse, the Corinthians, hearing, believing, were baptized. Corinthians. They heard they believed and they were baptized. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 27. Same Corinthians. In the 18th chapter, Paul says the Corinthians heard, believed, and were baptized. What did that make them? Watch this. They heard, believed, were baptized. What did that make the Corinthians? Watch Paul answer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27, Paul says, Now, after you heard, believed, and were baptized, he says, Now, you are the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? Stay with me now. I'm, I'm closing this thing. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. He is the head of the body, the church. The church is the body and the body is the church. When you say church in the New Testament, you're talking about the body. When you say body, you're talking about the church. Because the church is the body and the body is the church. Well, how many bodies are there? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 4. The Bible says there is but one body. 
So if the body is the church and the church is the body, then there cannot be but one body. And if there is not but one body, there can't be but one church because the church is the body and the We ain't in the gospel meeting yet, but we get that. Now, Paul says they heard, they believed, and they were baptized. And Paul says, now ye are the body of Christ. Where the body is the church and the church is the body. So when I say body, I'm saying church. When I say church, I'm saying body. So when Paul say body, he's saying church. Because the church is the body and the body is the church. So then when the Corinthians heard, believed, and were baptized, Paul says, now you are the church of Christ. Uh, Y'all missed that, didn't you? Now you are the church of Christ. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse 21, Paul says, not only are you the church of Christ, so now I'm going to tell you what happened to you when you heard believed and were baptized you not only became a member of the church of Christ but he established you where did he establish you he established you in Christ and when you were established, you were in, when you were in Christ, when you got in Christ, you were established. And when you were established, you were in Christ. And when you got in Christ, it was at that point that you were anointed. Not just a special group, but every child of God that was established now what do we mean what, what do we mean or what do we mean by the word see the word they establish it but it, it simply means establish now what do we mean by establish now the word establish means to be and the term to be means to exist so then what the text is saying now he which established us with you in Christ to be established which means to be which means to exist so then to be established in Christ is to exist in Christ because to be means to exist so when we get in Christ we begin to exist in other words we begin to be what we were not because Paul says if any man y'all going to help me if any man be and the word be mean to exist and, and the word to exist means to be established. So if any man is established, if any man exists, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. What makes him new? He has been given power by the Holy Spirit. 
which means the Holy Spirit anoints him. When we go down in the waters of baptism and become a child of God, whether you are a little boy, little girl, old girl, old woman, old, doesn't matter. Every person who obeys Jesus, every person who exists in Jesus Christ has the same anointing. We have the same anointing. You, the anointing that you receive is the same anointing I have. Yeah. I say the same anointing that you receive, same anointing that I have. Yeah. For me to be in Christ, I must be baptized into Christ. Yeah. For you to be in Christ, you must be baptized in Christ. Yeah. What I received when I was baptized in Christ, you received when you were baptized in Christ. Yeah. If I received the anointing, you received the anointing because we both did the same thing. There ain't no special anointing. Now, of course, we have different talents and different abilities. You see, you can't do what I'm doing up here. I thank you very much. But the anointing is the same. What I received, you received. But the talent and the skill is different. But the anointing is the same. Because I I'm in a state called B. Jesus said, I'm John said, he came to his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to be. Come. Now, become is a transit verb. Be, y'all got to it. Become is a transit verb. That means that it's a process. To become. Before you are established, you got to come to the point of establishment. You see, be come. Means to exist. Come mean to move. Come mean to move from one point to the next. If you want to be, you got to move. Y'all ain't getting this. Jesus said, Come unto me. If you want to be established in Christ, you got to move. You got to hear what the Bible said. You got to believe. You got to move. You can't sit there and expect to be anointed. The question is do you want to be or not be? To be or not to be? That's the question. If you want to be, you got to move. You got to get up, come down the aisle, and say, Lord, I want to be anointed. Lord, take me and use me. Lord, I ain't much, but I'm all I got. Well, I know. To be not to be that's the question Jesus says come to me and if you want to be come you got to move you got to move you can't just sit there and say I want to be anointed it doesn't come that way you got to move and when the Lord gets ready somebody has got to do you want to be anointed? Do you want to be anointed? If you want to be anointed, you got to come to Jesus. He said, come to me. And the only way to be calm is to come to Jesus. That you can't be without coming. You got to come to the Lord so he can establish you. The Bible says we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
for as many of you as have been baptized <laughs> into Christ have put on Christ you can do it this morning you can put Christ on you can be anointed that is you can have the blessings the providence the power and the call of God on your life you can have that but you gotta have the anointing you say well brother Washington I've been baptized yeah but you got to be baptized for the right thing you can't get this anointing any kind of way because there is only one baptism and that's the right one and you cannot be taught wrong and baptized right which means you think you've been anointed but you don't have the anointing you pray to God but God doesn't hear you and the reason he doesn't hear you you have not been anointed so then the question to you is to be or not to be that is the question Shakespeare said that in 1630 but Jesus said it in AD 30 there's a straight way and a narrow way there is a wide gate you have to decide which one of these gates you're going through is either to be are not to be you can have this anointing it's available if you will be willing to accept the Lord Jesus as he is if you will be willing to say Lord I ain't much but I'm all I got come on down here and get the right baptism not just any baptism but they're like, well, why you, why you keep saying right baptism? Because in order to get the right anointing, you got to have the right baptism. And, 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 and it's the whole, I didn't, I'll finish this tonight. I'll it's too much, leave, I'm leaving out too much. I'll finish it tonight. But because I didn't have time to tell you. Because I told you to remember in the preamble of my message, in the preamble of my message, that is the beginning of my message, I told you to remember that anointing was poured out. Yes, sir. And so we are anointed by the Holy Spirit. And he is the only one in the Godhead that's spoken of as being poured out. Yes, sir. Oh, you ain't getting this now. Yes, Don't start nothing here. You ain't getting it. In Joel chapter, and in, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 17, yes, the Bible says, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel it should come to pass in the last days says God I will <laughs> pour out of my spirit yes, sir. the Holy Spirit is seen as being poured out that's the person of the Godhead that anoints us because he's the one that's poured out on us when we are baptized for remission of sin he's waiting for you to be God is waiting for you to make a decision as to whether it's to be or not to be if you came with a friend that friend will walk with you and bring you down these aisles to Jesus Christ are you a member of the one church because if you want to be established you got to be in the one church the Corinthians were in the one church Paul says now you are the church of Christ because the body is the church and the church is the body and then he says now he which established us with you in Christ has anointed us so once you get into church that means that you have been established by Jesus Christ. Amen. And
And when you get established by Jesus Christ, you receive the anointing. And you see, here's what that anointing, here's what New Testament anointing is. See, New Testament anointing is the giving to us of the Holy Spirit, which leads us, guides us through his word. Interpret our groaning. You see, that's what the anointing does. In, in, and, and I'll finish this tonight. I'll finish it tonight. And, and that is, you see, in the Old Testament, it was physical. Yes, sir. Yes, see what sir. I'm saying? It was physical. They had to rub it on you. Yes, sir. Or pour it on you. All right. But in the New Testament, don't nobody rub on you. You just go down in the water. Yes, sir. And God sends the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And the Holy Spirit makes his abode with us when we are washed from our sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, in the New Testament, it's spiritual. You see, my pouring water on your head is not going to help you in there. You see, and you say, well, Doc, I want to be saved. Well, I can pour water all day, but that's not going to help because the anointing is spiritual. It's spiritual. It takes place in baptism. Just like being cleansed from your past sins is spiritual. Nobody can rub it on you. Nobody can rub salvation on you. Nobody can put their hand on your head and save you. It's spiritual. And the way you receive it is coming forward and saying, my brother, I, wanna, I want the anointing. And the anointing means that God has a call on your life. That he knows who you are. And when you sleeping, you watching on me. When you don't know whether you're in the world or not. He's watching. When you wake up, you don't know what happened. Storming while you were asleep, yeah. or somebody could have broken your house yeah. while you sleep. Yeah. Somebody could have dri driven your car off yeah. while you sleep. Yeah. That's why God watches over His own. Thank you. That is, God does for us what we can't do for ourselves. I know you're right. I know you're right, though. You see, God will take care of you. But for him to take care of you, you got to have the anointing. Yes, sir. And that's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Now tonight I'm going to finish this. I'm going to show you how you know you got it. To some, everybody who's baptized in Jesus Christ uh, for the correct reason and for the right reason and for a mission of sin is anointed. But many folk are anointed and don't know that they are anointed. And not only do they not know that they are anointed, but they, they don't know how to know that they are anointed. And even if they know they are anointed, what do, what do anointed people do? Oh, Y'all can say amen when you can. Uh -huh. But I'm anointed, well, let's just see. Because if you are anointed, there are certain things I better let that law on run you. I ain't going back out there tonight. But you need to know how to deal with the anointing that you have. Because you see, that anointing protects you. That anointing empowers you. See, that anointing is the call of God on your life. God gave you today. Yes, sir. I mean, why should God give you tomorrow? All right. Why should God wake you up tomorrow? That's a question. For what? I mean, why should He wake you up? Why should God give you one more day? All right. That's a good question. I mean, what? Why? Why should God give you when you pray tonight, you ask the Lord, bless me with another day. Why? Why? 
what you going to do with it? Why should God give you another day? Amen. Lord, please bless me to borrow you. Foo! All right, God. Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about that tonight. Lord, give me a longer life. Lord, give me a few more years. For what? You, you don't come to Sunday school? Half come to church. Stingy as you can be. Hold a nickel till that buffalo holler. Don't read your Bible. Don't study. Hey, my Lord, give me one more. Give me one more, one more day, Lord. For what? What you gonna be doing? He was doing all right now. He gonna start meddling now, but he was preaching pretty good. If you are here today and you want to say yes to the Lord, don't you wait another minute. You need the atonement. You need the anointing. You need that. Even if you're a child of God, even if you are Christian, even if you're a member of the Church of Christ, you still need to put that that anointing in action. You need to protect your anointing. Protect your anointing. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to protect you. He wants to empower you. You have to know how to protect that. God has a calling on your life. You were born to walk up the street. and That's not why you were born. Now, if you're here and you want to say yes to the Lord, if you're here and you want the church to pray for you, that, that, that you might be totally aware of your anointing. Be totally aware that every day I got to protect my anointing. And I thank God every day for my anointing. <laughs> I thank God every day for my anointing. What is his anointing? His protection, his blessings. His guidance, his empowerment. That's your anointing. Now you can lose that. And I'll tell you about that tonight. You can lose that. Oh yes you can. You can be walking around here spiritually as naked as a jaybird and think you got clothes on. But you can have the anointing. And if you are not a member of the church of Christ, if you will be willing to come down here and publicly confess, I believe Jesus Christ to be the son of God. We'll baptize you. And it is at that point that you are established with Christ and anointed by the Holy Spirit. And then God has a call on your life. And then you live your life based on purpose. See, based on purpose. You don't have purpose, you don't have a life. You got to have purpose. You got to, you got to live your life based on purpose. You can't be shooting fluke shots every day. You got to know what your purpose is. If you don't know what your purpose is, it's like going to the basketball gym with a basketball, tennis shoes on, trunks on, and you ain't got no goals up there. You in the gym, but you ain't got nothing to shoot at. Hey, yeah, y'all ain't getting it. So you have to have a purpose in life. You can't go through life uh, uh, loosey-goosey. 
you got to have an object. You got, and you young folk, listen to me. You can't go through life. I don't know. What grade you in, Levin? What you gonna be? I don't know. You mean you don't know yet? You should have known in the first grade what you wanted to be. And you need to be pursuing it rather 25 years old, what you gonna be? I don't know. Where you going, young man? Nowhere in particular. No purpose. I was at, I went to IHOP yesterday morning and a young man was sitting there, beautiful, I mean, handsome young man, handsome. Walked in there with his pants all down on his behind. But he was a handsome young fella. You know, I mean, he, he just, he, ideal guy, little guy. I mean, and I was impressed with him. And I walked up and I said, hey, my man, what's up? Talk to you. As handsome as you are, and as healthy looking as you are, my God, you can make a contribution. And I said, What's going on, man? What'd it be like? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I know how to lay it down when I need to lay it down. <laughs> he said, He looked at me because he didn't know me and I didn't know him either. And he looked at me, he said, no, everything's all right. I said, okay, my man. <laughs> it's all good in the hood. What's happening? <laughs> and then he relaxed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he really relaxed. Yeah. He started grinning. I <laughs> <Started> laughing. <laughs> I know what he was laughing <laughs> Who is this old dude talking to this? <laughs> I know that's what he was saying. Who in the world is this old dude talking this rap here? And, and then I said, what you doing for you? That's where I was trying to get. I said, but I want to relax him. Yeah. Didn't even know the fellow. But my heart just, you see, let me just say, you see, you can't just love your boy yeah. and, and, and your daughter, yeah. you know. I mean, if you don't, you see, you need to love all daughters, yeah. all boys, all, love them all. If your love just stopped with you and your husband you, and your two children and y'all four and no more, you in trouble. Yes, See what I'm saying? And, 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 I, and I said to him, you know, I said, what you doing, my man? I said, are you in school? He said, no. I said, you don't go to school? He said, no. I said, what you doing? He said, nothing. That's sad. Because eventually he's going to wind up in jail. That's why you have so many handsome, good-looking young men in jail. Just like this dude sitting there in the IHOP, you know, with his pants down on his booty, on the phone. I mean, he was working that phone. And he was sure enough working that phone. One hand. I mean, he had it going, boy. And uh, so, so I, I was speaking. And I gave him the same message. I said, son, you, you need to go. And I said, uh, uh, you need to get yourself back in school. I don't even know this boy. I didn't even tell him my name. That's not important. I need to get him some information. He doesn't even know who I am. You need to hear what I got to say. You need to get yourself back in school. I said,